get the paper wet, starting with the top, clean water. And I think we're gonna do this. And I'm using an arches block. It is, a, I think, a eight by 11 sheet. And I'm gonna start with my yellow. So I did talk about yellows, just gonna drop yellows down here. It's gonna just kind of migrate down. Um, I'll turn on this light. Um, okay. I think I'm gonna turn this one off here. There we go, better. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that. So for you to see the shadow, but that's fine. All right, so we have that. So maybe put a little bit of yellow down here. And it's wet. So again, it's wet, so it's just creating. It's blooming, it's coming down, it's mixing. Now I'm gonna grab my red, just using my primary colors. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my red in this one, a little bit of red here, a little bit of red here, a little bit of red, just a little bit of red here, just like that. And I want these colors to kind of move around. That's kind of the plan. I'm kind of letting them do what watercolor does. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and, while that's going there, I'm gonna grab my blue. I'm gonna use my cobalt cobalt blue um, just to start off with my, in my red to create a purple, um, just start off with, and then kind of put it in here in some of these areas. Um, there's some of these that are gonna be white, little white little guys because of the, so I'm gonna to try to paint around as much as I can a little bit, but it's not it's not necessary. Why you ask? Because it's it's the lightest color. Good question. Um, because it's the lightest color. So, you know, a lot of times you're not trying to create or have a lot of white in your painting because it's really distracting. Um, and it's once you put your darks in there, you're just creating <clears throat> shadows anyway. So it's. It, there's no really no a lot of there's no really no need to keep you know unless it's you know a white boat or you know white sails or something like that but in general it doesn't really matter and since it's going to dry lighter anyways doesn't really matter so I'm just going to let this move around a little bit more and maybe put a little bit of purple in here just to let those kind of just to bring some of that purple that I have down there in some of these areas, just a little bit here, just like that. Let that dry. And I have, I still have an angle because I want the colors to kind of migrate down. Um, you know, I want to be, that's because that's one of the only things you can, you can control in watercolor is the direction of which, whatever way the, you know, the paper is, is leaning or towards. So, Really, you want to have it at an angle so it just slowly comes down this direction. And just go for it here. I'm going to start with some red here. See how dark that is? I'll see how much um, more pigment that is. What I will do is I'll put a little bit of yellow in here just to let it, um, just to create a little interesting, you know, oranges and, but still very but still very red, right? So that red is very, it's such a strong color that you're not really going to change its nature. You're just going to, um, you're just going to create, you know, get a little more complexity to that color there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring some water and drag some of this down here. Just a little bit, just quickly coming to come down. I'm gonna to continue to put in this red here. And more yellow in here, just to give a little bit of a, you know, these are little, these are what these are, these, these are becoming a little wet to wet um, kind of experiments or not experiments, a little wet into wet paintings right here for the fact that I'm just doing, instead of doing the whole background, you're just kind of doing these little wet into wet parts through the, 
and these little um, turnips or whatever they arugula. I like saying arugula. All right, so I'm gonna do another one here. I'm not sure why I was being very nice and neat on this edge because I think I'm gonna let that just kind of blend in there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow right in the center here. You know, even though they're not in the picture, they're not, you know, there's no yellow in there, but I am um, using artistic license to kind of go with the flow. What I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of blue and put that into my red to create a purple and just put a little bit of purple accents in the edges just to same way I, I same way I put the, the yellow for the same reason I put the yellow in just to create a little bit more interest in this edge here if I can put a little bit here on this bottom edge maybe a little bit here I'm gonna drag this brush down here and drag that color. You know, you don't have to get it all, you know, you don't have to get it full of color. You can just grab a little water and just drag that. And so what's gonna happen as it slowly dries, it's gonna be slowly, that color is gonna be slowly creeping its way down here. Um, so if you do it right, this second wash, you're pretty much done, I mean, In a, in a perfect world, it'd be done. But in watercolor, it's never done. You never get that washed the way you really want it. I rarely, I, I mean, I do, but it does take a while to, to be confident enough to let it be. And again, now I'm gonna do purple and maybe a little more red. And again, I'm just, again, at this point, just doing a lot of wet to wet little exercise, little, little, wet to wet little mixes in here. Um, and I'm letting those colors kind of mingle, kind of touch right in this area. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a little bit of yellow into that purple. Why you say? Because it's gonna create a neutral tone and I'm tying in the background, the foreground. I just dropped it in there and it's just gonna create something interesting. Um, same kind of thing down here. Grab a little bit of red, a little more red. purple in there. Well, I'm liking the way that yellow is kind of spreading out in there. Oh, that's looking nice. If I do say so myself. So I'm going to grab a little yellow and just kind of bring this yellow and this purple together a little bit. The key is just to do a quick stroke and don't try to blend it yourself. Let the paper and the watercolor blend it, you know, do all the work for you. And uh, that just comes with the experience and practice, like you know exactly what's going to happen or have a good idea what's going to happen. Not necessarily the same, you know, like you can't control like the shape it's going to create. You just, but you understand it's going to create those neutral tones. It's going to continue to blend and mix um, without you doing anything. So that's the fun part about watercolor. There's pros, and there's pros and cons with that technique or, you know, knowing that. The pro is, uh, you know, you can let it do its thing. And then the con is, or the con is, what, 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 what am I trying to say? Uh, the pro is that you let, it will do all the work for you. The con is, uh, I'm not sure. Anyways, it, the other way is it will create whatever you, you know, maybe if you're not wanting that, then it will create uh, I need more beer I think that's the problem but 
but knowing how to use watercolor, um, knowing what, what its nature is, is the key. Okay. So no, every single one of these little, every one of these little um, orbs or turnips or are their own little wet to wet. But I'm letting part of it kind of mix together. And these ones are gonna be these ones in back are gonna be a little bit lighter because I really want those to look like they're further back and almost like a ghostly. I don't want it to be in focus, that's what I'm trying to say. But I'm also doing some negative painting. See how I painted around um, the tentacle of our monster? And then I think I wanna put in, that one's a little lighter too. One of that purple range. Negative painting. So I went back up here and that's where uh, I knew I knew that it was dry or at least that one was dry. This one's a little bit too, a little bit wet, but you know, it, it started to bloom a little bit here, which is fine. I mean, cause I can hide that a little bit later, but you probably won't be able to see that once you get everything laid down. I'm gonna go ahead and put another, this buddy right here, a little bit of light purple one kind of hiding back here. This kind of I really like the way this this red and this yellow just slowly creeped its way down here. It just gives you a nice little kind of glowing aspect to it. So I think what I'm gonna do now is start working into um, the greens, the different greens up here into um, into uh, the leaves. Uh, I'm gonna start with my darker tone. I'm gonna start with my darks and then work away to my to my lighter ones. Um, just uh, let's see, I'm gonna use my French ultramarine blue. <clears throat> to create a darker kind of yellow. I'm gonna hit the darks here, let's see. It's a little bit of a dark here. Grab a different brush. Yeah. I like a nice pointy brush when I'm doing this kind of detail work. especially when I'm just trying to create the negative shape. I 
And let's say you want to darken up even more that green. Go ahead and put a little bit of red in there. And again, you're creating a neutral tone with your red and your green with our complements. And you're creating a little darker kind of um, tone to it. So and it, almost like an olive kind of green to it. So I'm gonna put another little green area here. I love just kind of mixing the greens, um, different types of greens, kind of tying a couple of these, you know, tying these all together. Cause they're just, they're green. So you just, you know, if you look at the, at the picture, it's just a very, a whole bunch of different greens. And without me trying to match every single one of these, I'm just kind of, playing around and just putting them next to each other and it doesn't really matter. So we have a little bit of a green here. Now at this point we're doing glazing. So we did a wet to wet. Now we're working on to glazing. All negative shapes here and there. So I'm sort of trying to stick with, especially, well, the you know think of think of leaves or you know these can be grasses these can be you know um in the foliage in a forest and i'm just trying to just follow you know like little roads pretty much but everything should connect you know don't uh don't you know put a a darker tone here where you know you want these lighter uh you know leaves that are going to be on top of this to really look like they're going all the way up and they're still connecting versus kind of being chopped off. But the darks, you know, again, are just, you know, kind of continuing, you know, like little branches. So right there, I did some negative shape. I just did this little itty bitty, like this E shape. Just kind of picking little shapes that I see in the picture or on my painting. Let's see, we have this darker tone here.
Just still continuing to create these negative shapes. Just probably just kind of putting little veins in a little bit here. So in a lot of ways, that's just already that's already done up there. Put a little bit of green over this, glazing over that green over that purple, just to get a little bit darker. Just push, also just to push that back a little bit. Maybe a little bit here too. So it still reads as a purple, but it's just being pushed back with that green. I think we'll do the same thing right here underneath this one. Okay, I'm gonna continue with this. And we just want a little bit of yellow, darker, a little bit of blue. Letting those colors mix together as they're going down. Right. Okay. I'm just gonna grab some water and just kind of tint some of these down a little bit. Just because I have my lights in darks. So I probably need some more darker darks, but I'll let that dry a little bit. Um, 
and I'll kind of start focusing. So again, I just kind of have this, the shapes, everything kind of filled in up top. Couple, I'm gonna put some, I think I'm gonna put some darker darks in here, but I'm not sure, uh, uh, you know, you wanna work on everything evenly. So what I mean by that is that you just wanna start putting so many darks in here, then all of a sudden, um, when you put some something down here, that becomes overpowering. So you know, work on everything evenly. So I worked a little bit on top, kind of filled everything in. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and start putting a little bit toward the bottom of the painting here, um, just to make those stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to use my blues my purples, more into the red tone. Maybe, okay, more into the blue tone. Uh, well, more into something tone. So I'm gonna put that in there. Have a little yellow, put a little yellow in there to create a, a neutral tone. Some red in here. Bring some of that, that dark into here. Maybe just kind of grab some water and let that kind of wash over a little bit over that, over that. Uh, vegetable right there. So it's because, you know, at this, this point, it's, it's a little bit of a gla you're glazing a lot. And I'm just kind of going over some negative painting of this area here. Before that dries, drag a little bit of that there. Yeah. Let that kind of just blend in together. So it just pushes that back a little bit. So notice this is just very complex. So you have, you know, you have reds, you have yellows, creating this neutral tone here. You have, purp you have uh, purples, you have blues. So it's not just dark, right? It's a, it's a, it's a variety of different... It's a very complex dark tone. And I just want to make sure I continue with that. You know, that's why you want to use the same colors every single time. Don't don't get, you know, all crazy and go, oh, I'm gonna try a different blue. You know, just work on the same palette for uh for this. A little more blue into here. Mm -hmm. Red. Perfect. I'm gonna connect. Got a little damp brush to just kind of drag a little bit of that of that background right into that. So it just kind of so it's not a hard line. I mean, it's hard to tell in the it's hard to tell from where you guys are at, but um, it just kind of blends into it, that water blends it in. So it's not a hard edge. It's kind of it's uh, lost and found edges. You have this harder edge here with a contrasting shape of uh, the softer edge in the, in, uh, on the right hand side or on the left hand side. I 
think what's making this more complicated is <clears throat> the fact that it's kind of very small. Well, for me at least. Usually I'm just throwing slang and color around. So, but I guess also there's a lot of negative, a lot of negative shape I'm trying to go around into, trying to keep. All right, so I'm gonna, <clears throat> I like how that yellow up there, someone's gonna put a little bit more yellow in here, maybe a little green. So it's just gonna create, it's gonna, it's gonna just kind of flow down since I have it at an angle. So I'm gonna start, uh-oh, didn't mean to do that, oh well. <clears throat> I can quickly fix that. Thirsty brush, pick, oh wait, wait, what's that? Oh no, that's not there, you're right, okay, I'm good. I'm good. Just getting confused, which doesn't take much. Okay, put a little bit of purple in here, maybe here. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna go ahead and, all right, so. You know, a lot of times you wanna stop and take a look at your painting and make sure that uh, um, it's going the way you want it to go. Also, stepping away from your painting or, you know, is a good thing. Um, just to get a better perspective when you come back. So I'm going to do more blue. I think I'm going to, a little darker. And so at this point, it's like glazing, right? I'm not going to, I'm just putting another coat, the layer on top of here. And then maybe put in some little itty bitty kind of darker tones. I think I'll want that there. You know, this is where really the painting part begins, I think, uh, the details, right? Because we all can do, I mean, we can all kind of put in some of the larger tones it's just knowing where the smaller details knowing where those go knowing where to stop knowing you know enough what is enough is enough kind of stuff that's the harder part which i do recognize sometimes you just gotta burn through paper to figure that out
All right. So <clears throat> again, trying to figure this out here. Not to get too many, but again, not to get too few and not to get too small with these or not too big. You want to, you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, put the little veins of these little leaves. Hmm. Lean back a little bit to see what I see. What? That made no sense. You made me bleed my own blood. <laughs> that even makes more or less sense. When I paint, sometimes I don't, my mind is somewhere else. It's in the other world, man. Okay. Look at that. Okay, like that. A little bit of little lines here, there, and everywhere. Now this will do some little lines of some leaves here. Okay, I think that's pretty good there. Push some of these back a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Now for the piece of resistance, the last bit is going to be um, these... Um, these beautiful things, balloons. All right. <coughs> Put a little bit more red into here. Bring that forward a little bit more. And don't be afraid to experiment a little bit to figure out, okay, what if I put this on top of here? Blend that a little bit in there. Put a little bit of glazes down a little bit. Put a little more red into here. Maybe a little bit of purple. Just going for it here. Let's see what happens. See what kind of interesting things I can create. And I'm still using the same, you know, same color. So it's not like... You're just glazing over, getting a little bit of a darker tone here. Put a little bit of a little bit of something here like that. Put a little bit of pure yellow, pure yellow. 
right in here. Yep. Put a little bit of darker tone just in here. I just blend in a little bit. Yep. Now I'm just going with the darks now just to punch some areas up, bring some stuff down. Uh, she has always been one of those late, she, like she likes the late uh, shower times. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Some darker. Just glazing over some areas, just kind of pushing some things back. I do like this yellow area here, so I'm going to see if I can put in some yellow right into this area here. So it kind of frames a little bit of that. Not half bad, but not half good, half something. <clears throat> you know what, let's bring some red. So again, I'm gonna tie things together. I did the purple, I'm gonna tie in a little bit of purple up here. Just to tie in some of these, grab a little bit more, grab a little bit of brush that has a little bit more of a point to it. At this point, I'm just painting for my gut. I'm just like, okay, I feel like I need something here, so I'm gonna put something there. Um, trying not to get my head out of it, pain from my from my heart. Okay. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is just actually I'll let that dry complete and I'll show you another way. Instead of using white, you can actually wipe out um, some highlights. So I'll let that dry completely, then I will wipe, I'll wipe that out. Uh, let's see, there's a little area here that's bothering me. Paint that a little bit more. Oh. I think I'm gonna make it worse. Oh, probably gonna make it worse. Or yellow. Okay. Okay. I sure let that be, but oh well. <clears throat> Sometimes you get too much in trouble. Okay, so. Uh, you can use an exacto knife or just something sh sharp um, and you can um, scrape in some of these little you know because the you know these little things have little white areas in them little kind of those little stems octopus legs have little some scratching in I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell but trust me it's pretty it's working great so I'm just kind of scraping in his little hairs that um, 
and you can you can almost you can hear the scratching of and it's it it works when it's paper is sort of like damp and not necessarily because then i can notice right here it's bruising creating a little dark line there so that's not what i want i want a more of a scrape and you're kind of lifting up paint so just kind of adding a little bit of textures in here and you're just kind of scraping in some of those you're scraping out some of those colors so we'll let that be a little bit yeah i'll let that be I'll lift up this area here All right, now I'm gonna let that dry. So the wipeout techniques, you know, I think last week I talked a little bit about, um, you know, you can use white to create interesting, you know, little details and those kind of things, which, which I still might do, or might do. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out. So, so there's a couple little highlights that are um, here on these turnips or whatever they might be, I don't know what they are. Um, and so I'm just going to get the paper wet and it really works well on arches paper, right? So I'm going to just kind of, um, you know, arches is very rugged paper. And so you also have to have a lot of pigment on there. So it's really pigment. So I'm going to just go, it just a little area right there. I'm going to just wipe it off really quick. Boom. I'm going to grab, that's such a, it's kind of a harder brush here. Oh, oh. I use this flat brush here. Again, do it again. And I can just kind of disturb it a little bit more, let it sink in, then you can just wipe out some of those little highlights there. I'm gonna do a little bit here. And just kind of press it in. And then just it just kind of lifts up a little, uh, an area, right? And that's kind of what you're going for. Then you can kind of soften those in. <clears throat> uh, so that's another way you can create little highlights um, in your turnips or whatever you're doing. You could also lift up a little bit. So what I mean by that is let's say I want to put a little bit more um, texture up here. And you know, so this is a very dark area here. So I'm gonna use my flat brush with just water and I'm just gonna hit the edge and I'm gonna to try to lift up as much as I can. And it, let's see, you'll see it's lifting up a little bit. Yeah, you can see how it's starting to lift up a little bit. So that's what you're going for. You're lifting up that, that area of and it's gotta be a darker tone. Now what I can do is just wipe out like that. And so you can actually see how I lifted up that pigment right there. So, you know, there is, an, you can erase some watercolor. Um, so <clears throat> don't, uh, don't think you can't. Now, um, you just gotta be careful. Uh, some papers don't lift up, you know, uh, some don't, they don't lift up as nicely as others do. Some do amazingly. <clears throat> In my opinion, Arches is, well, for one thing, it's the best paper you can paint on, one. But two, um, you, it can really take a beating. It, um, I think that's why I like it so much, because it's like me. I, I can take a beating, keep coming. Um, so, and I think it has to do with uh, the natural sizing it has in it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of a darker tone here just to blend it in a little bit. Um, what I can do, is grab another brush here, grab my white. Again, I'm using my Daniel Smith uh, uh, watercolor sticks, the white. And I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of white paint here. You know, and some, you know, listen, if you're looking to be more, you know, I'm just kind of doing these circular motions and the paper's a little bit damp. Um, 
I'm just trying, and I'm gonna use my little finger, I'm gonna use my finger here to just kind of move it around so it looks like very shiny, so instead of harder edges. So some people I know, you know, wanna keep into, you know, very purist. Um, I'm not, a, you know, I'm a painter first and foremost. My job is to make sure that I'm happy with my painting. Um, I don't have these rules. Some artists do, and uh, that's fine. And I will continue to make fun of them. But um, to me, it's just trying to finish, trying to make the best painting you can. And if that is adding a little white, then so be it. Um, I paint so loose that sometimes I lose whatever I was working on. You know, if I was trying to keep a white area, it might be, it might, I might lose it. So, <clears throat> um, I'm okay, I'm okay with that. So, but right now I'm just gonna put in a little bit of these little hair, little white kind of. Uh, I think there's roots, the roots of our little guys here. Trying not to get too carried away with the white because it, it can be overpower power a painting quite quickly. So, um, being very aware of that. And again, like I always say, it's better to be 90% unfinished than 120% overworked. So I'm not trying to overwork this painting. I'm just trying to keep it nice and loose. The essence of our, of our turnips. Okay. And it will dry lighter, so I know that for a fact that it will. Since it is watercolor, and watercolor tends to dry lighter, so I understand that. And I, so uh, I'm not too worried that's gonna stand out too much, which sometimes it could, but it probably won't. And that's why I use watercolor, uh, you know, watercolor white versus using gouache or something else, because I know the consistency of the paint. I know exactly what it will do if you use gouache or a white acrylic or something, um, tempera. It's, it, the, the way it dries is different, and it's going to look different um, on your painting. So that's why I just stick with watercolor uh, with these whites. And so... Um, because I know what it can do. I know how, how hard I can push it before I lose kind of the feel. Okay, just kind of move this here like that. Yeah, let's see. I'll put a, let's put a couple longer ones here because I think in the picture, I like how some of them are curling into Kind of like this, yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll post this on on our um, Facebook on the Palette Club, so you can kind of see these small little details. It's hard to tell in the Zoom screen, but trust me, it's beautiful. All right, so don't get too carried away, Mr. Chad. Please don't get carried away. So you tell yourself these things so you don't get carried away. <clears throat> yeah. I think. Put a pin cushion in this bad boy. I think we might be done with this one. Well, from the demo at least. Um, let's see, I might need to put some darker tones. What do I think? 
Overwork? No. Over? No. 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 I think I'm happy with. It. I think I'll just put a quick, couple little lines because I think there's a lot of. Um, I try to make you know change the change the shape of things. Like if you have a lot of big wet washes, some line work helps balance all those things. So um, let me put a couple little lines here. Just the who knows what they are. I'm just trying to break up all those little itty bitty shapes those larger shapes those medium tone shapes and put a little, couple little veins of the flowers to help just give a little balance to it you know, go into this area here okay I think that's I think that's it. I think I've beaten this poor horse to death here. Yeah, so again, the darks and the white kind of makes them stand out next to the purples. <clears throat> and then I'll go ahead and finish this bad boy up, give it one last look before I sign it. Because again, for me, if I sign it, that means I'm finished. And I think this will help me from, again, making sure that it's, um, I don't overwork it. So I'm going to go and sign it really quick. And then that is it. Right in time because the boy keeps running in.